In this lesson, we'll take a close look at the four different question formats you'll find in the quantitative sections of the GRE. They are quantitative comparison, multiple choice, select one answer, multiple choice, select one or more answers, and numeric entry. We'll begin with quantitative comparison questions. Here you're given two quantities, and you must determine which is greater, or whether there's enough information to make such a comparison. The answer choices for quantitative comparison questions are always the same. Now this question is pretty easy. Once we evaluate quantity A and quantity B, we can easily see that quantity B is greater. Now in the quantitative comparison lesson module, we'll examine this question type in greater detail, and we'll learn a wide range of strategies for answering this question type. All right, the next question type to discuss is the multiple choice select one answer question. This is the question type that you're most familiar with. Here you're given a mathematical question and you must select the correct answer among five answer choices. Another question type is the multiple choice select one or more answer choices question. Here you're given a mathematical question along with any number of answer choices. Your job is to indicate all of the correct responses to the question. Now this question type is indicated by the square buttons beside the answer choices as well as some text directing you to select all of the correct responses. Now it's important to note that it may be the case that only one answer is correct, or all of them may be correct, or anything in between. To receive credit for this question type, you must select all of the correct answers and no more. Finally, if the question specifies how many answer choices to select, be sure to select exactly that number of choices. Now for this particular question, the correct responses are as follows. Okay, the last question type to discuss is the numeric entry question. Here you're not given any answer choices. Instead, you must enter your response directly into the box provided. To do this, simply click on the answer box and enter the number using the keyboard. To enter a negative symbol, use the hyphen. Now some other key features of this question type are as follows. First, when entering numbers larger than 1000, the commas that separate every three digits will automatically appear. Next, if you're using the on-screen calculator to perform calculations, the calculator's transfer display button will take whatever value is on the display screen and transfer it to the answer box. Next, equivalent forms of a number are all considered correct. For example, entering 6 for this question is the same as entering 6.00. Finally, you must enter the exact value unless you're directed to round the answer. Let's take a look at a numeric entry question where we're told to round our answer. Now, if three widgets weigh 17 kilograms, then we can find the weight of one widget by dividing 17 by 3 to get 5.66 repeating. Since we're told to round our answer to the nearest tenth, we must round our answer to 5.7. If we fail to round our answer to the nearest tenth as directed, we will not receive credit for our response. It's also important to point out that the transfer display button on the on-screen calculator will not round any answers for you. So for this question, if the on-screen calculator looks like this, then pressing the transfer display button will transfer the entire number to the entry box. And if you fail to round the answer to the nearest tenth, it will be scored as incorrect. So just be careful when using the transfer display button. Now there are two types of numeric entry questions. So far we've examined the single box questions. The other question type is the two box question where the answer must be expressed as a fraction. To enter values for the numerator and denominator, just click on each box and use the keyboard to enter your values. To create a negative fraction, use the hyphen to make either the numerator or denominator negative. Now for two box numeric entry questions, it's important to note that you are not required to simplify your fractions. So for example, it's perfectly fine to enter four tenths as an answer here, even though four tenths is not a simplified fraction. Similarly, it would be acceptable to enter 40 over 100 as an answer as well. Just keep in mind that there may be instances in which the test makers have limited the size of the numbers that will fit inside the boxes. For example, it's unlikely that the fraction 40,000 over 100,000 would fit inside these boxes, in which case you would need to simplify the fraction. 
Now another point to mention is that decimal points cannot be used here. So for example, we cannot enter fractions like this, where one of the values contains a decimal point. Finally, as you might imagine, the transfer display button on the on-screen calculator cannot be used for two box numeric entry questions. All right, that concludes this lesson. Let's summarize. In this lesson, we examine the four different question formats you'll find in the quantitative sections of the GRE.